Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to put the Thingino firmware on a Wansview W7. Stay tuned. What's up guys, it's Josh with the WL Tech Blog, back again with another install video. So this is going to be another no tool install. You do not need to disassemble this camera in order to put our firmware on it. So that's awesome. Now this is another one that I developed after picking one up and I like the camera enough that I bought a second one. This one is brand new, whoops, in the box. This is the first time it's been opened. Comes with some hardware, blah, 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 power adapter. Oh, it comes with a manual W7 quick installation guide. I wonder what the first step is going to be. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at that. Download app and register account. Nope, we're not going to do that. Anyway, this can all be thrown away. This is not an unboxing channel, but things do come out of boxes. All right, now on this camera, the USB cord is pretty long. It's also hardwired in. This is not detachable, and this cord does not carry data. This is power only. And I'll tell you a few things that I don't like about that in just a minute. So here we have the camera itself. It has a mounting plate here. Do, 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 do. The mounting plate does come off like so. And if you want to take the camera apart, which you shouldn't have to, you've got one screw. It's right here on the round part. That actually pops the top off. You don't need to take these off unless you're trying to get to the power board or the pan motor but for this upgrade we do not need to take it apart so i'm just going to put this thing back in and you are going to need an sd card it should be uh, at least 256 megs i use 16 gig cards that i picked up for cheap uh, i pick them up several at a time and they work good now this camera i would say is a mid-range camera it is outdoor so that's nice it is pan and tilt so that's nice the antennas seem like they would be nice only one of these is real the other one is just a piece of plastic with nothing inside of it i don't remember which is which but i could pull one of them off and it wouldn't hurt at all what makes this a mid-range camera instead of a higher-end camera is it has one of the lower-end T31 processors. It's the T31L, and it only has an 8 gigabyte or 8 megabyte flash on it. So that kind of limits how far this camera is gonna go as far as adding additional software onto it. When you start to want something like I use Zero Tier VPN on mine, and it has no problems fitting on the 16 meg flash chips but it's a struggle to keep it going on the 8 meg chips now we are shrinking the image on the Thingino firmware as we go as we find more things that we can minimize or remove or optimize so i don't think that's going to be a problem having specifically zero tier on there but if you're thinking about maybe putting other software in there that might be a hindrance now another thing that's not unique to this camera but it's less common is that the wi-fi chip in it is actually connected over usb and generally for most devices that wouldn't mean much but the ingenic chips only have a single usb port and if it's used for that wi-fi that means you're not able to use a wi-fi header directly to be able to run something like cloner or to be able to use the usb serial gadget console that i've recently been working on so you really want to get the flash done properly the first time and my recommended backup plan is to actually use a flash programmer and program it with that so with that said flashing this device is actually really easy you're doing it with an sd card and there are three steps I'm going to go ahead and create an install document for this that I'll have linked down below as well. But the instructions are as follows. Step one, you need to get the U-boot image for the T31L chip. And I'll have the link for where you get that down below. It'll also be in the install image that I'll have prepared for you. 
Step two is you get the Thingino firmware image from our GitHub release page for the WANS VW7 camera. You put them both on the SD card and they have to have very specific names. The uBoot file needs to be v4 underscore boot dot bin and the Thingino firmware needs to be auto update dash full dot bin. Once you have those two files on there, you pop the SD card into the camera, power it on, wait about five minutes, and you should see the Thingino network pop up on your Wi-Fi networks list that allow you to connect in and configure the device. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually do that process with you. So before we do that real quick, I'm gonna show you what's on the inside of this camera. All right, gonna give you a quick tour around this device. I've got this one opened up, and this is the one I've been doing the development work on. So once you get taken apart, there's a couple motor connectors, this blue one, there's this white one. Uh, this one here is, I think, for the speaker. And the infrared, or I guess this one's power. This one's coming off USB. So we'll just have a quick look at the board here. We've got your SD card. We've got the Ingenic T31. It's an L. Uh, the Wi-Fi here is... USB attached and so that complicates things if you were to need to do any sort of recovery on here you're going to end up needing to work a little harder uh, down here this does appear to be a USB header however the Wi-Fi is connected by USB so you're going to have a little bit of difficulty potentially getting that header to work so if you look down in this corner, this is actually the UART, and it's in a weird shape. I'm able to get into it using my pogo pin clip, and I take ground here from the SD card slot, so that works out okay. Here's the camera lens, and the lights are all on a little daughter board in there. Now again, the USB cord that is hardwired into this only has the power lines attached so you're not able to do any of the extra USB stuff like run cloner off of it or the currently being added uh, USB serial gadget console that I've been working on so anyway hopefully you don't have to take this apart if you do your best bet is probably to use a programmer on the flash chip here instead of screwing around with the USB but the USB might be a viable option if you don't have a programmer all right so the prepared SD card is gonna look like this and we're gonna go ahead and pop it into the camera so you got this little rubber lid on the top take our SD card it goes in this away and click and then we've got a hundred miles of USB cord I've got the SD card in I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power and here we go so this process the factory U-boot is actually looking for that v4 underscore boot dot bin. There's a couple other files that it can look for, but I always try to get the bootloader flash, get into our bootloader so that we know where we're at and we have a reliable method. Then our bootloader looks for that auto update dash full dot bin, and if it exists, it will go ahead and flash that to the entire thing. So it sounds like that might be about done i just heard the ir cut all right and we have thing 40 something something so that is our new thin geno device let me go ahead and get it configured for my wi-fi network real quick this does now prompt you to sign into the network we have it set up as a captive portal so most devices should detect that and go ahead and get it uh, bring you right to the setup page all right so i put them in now it's going to reboot the camera 
Another thing to note is on the setup page when it asks you for the host name, it is going to go ahead and broadcast that host name out with MDNS and you will actually also have uh, SSDP being advertised. So if you have Windows, you should actually see your camera in your network neighborhood. But for example, I named mine W7-2 and after reconnecting my phone to my Wi-Fi network, going to Chrome, you can put in HTTP colon slash slash W7-2 and that takes me right to the setup page. Now well, let's just have a look at our preview here. So there you go. Now you have a camera set up with the Thingino firmware on a WANSview W7. I'll go ahead and put the links to the camera and to the SD cards down in the description. If you need any assistance with this, if you run into any trouble, definitely head over to our Discord. Or if you want to participate in the project, we are always looking for new folks who want to come in and assist with development, help out with testing. And we also have a pretty good user community over there. We also have a Telegram channel if you are into Telegram, but the primary channel is still gonna be the Discord. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up another video here. I've got more cameras on the bench that I'm working on installs for, and all the links for everything will be down in the video description. Definitely, if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, please give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. There's going to be a lot more content coming. And if you do want to participate, come on over to our Discord. And we'll see you in the next video. Till then, stay fresh, cheese bags.